What is Azure Auto Manage? It is like any other tool that you need to know as an administrator. Let's try to understand in today's session on IT Simplified. Like always, if you're liking these sessions, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this content. If you've been involved in any data center operation, you know that it is very critical to keep your IT infrastructure compliant and as per the policy driven by that organization. And part of this administration involves that you need to keep uh, inventory control, you need to update, you need to patch your environment on a regular basis. Now, do these ch changes when you move that environment to the cloud? Not really. I think it's even become more critical. That's where Azure Auto Manage shines because it's part of the cloud adoption framework. And as part of this engagement, you can enroll not only your, your Azure infrastructure, but also machines which are on-prem, which has been enabled through Azure Arc, you can bring them to the auto-managed service. And the question arises, what kind of role-based access control or RBAC you need in order to achieve this? Now, if you're doing this for the first time, you need to be owner of the subscription or optionally a contributor and user administrator access at the subscription level. So enough of theory, let's see how we can achieve this on Azure portal. All right, so I'm logged into the Azure portal and I have owner access for this subscription. And let's try to search for auto manage in the global search bar. And you can see that uh, on the left plate, I have auto manage machine and I have the configuration profile. If I pick auto manage machine, I can go and enable on existing machine. But before I do that, let's look into the configuration profiles. And you can see by default, Microsoft Azure provides two options. One is for the production environment and one is for the dev test. And if I go and expand the first option for production environment, you can see it has services such as backup, you have the anti-malware, all these options which are there, which Microsoft recommends and part of the cloud adoption framework that you should have uh, for onboarding your machine. The second option you can see that is the dev test option and some of the services are not enabled and rightly so like for example uh, for your dev test environment you don't need to back it up right in most of the cases uh, the machine inside monitoring is also switched off so some of the categories which are part of the production by default it is not there but the good thing is that you also have this option of creating your own configuration profile so let's do this we're going to create our own and let's see what the flow is so i'm going to name let's say my profile and pick the subscription under which it will be setting. And like any resource, you need to deploy this in a resource group. So I'm going to let's say use auto manage resource group. It's in Canada central. And now you can specify what service you want as part of this configuration profile. So starting with backup, obviously I want to protect your machine in case something unforeseen happen, I should be able to recover and I can have the frequency of daily and weekly. I can specify the time. I can also use what time zone I want, right? And I can also specify how many recovery point I want. The max I can go is five, right? But let's say I only want to retain one recovery snapshot for this. I can also specify the retention of my daily backup point. By default, it's 180. I can always change it. I think the maximum I can go is up to 9999 days right if i go let's say more than that then i will get an error so let's say i want uh, seven days which is a minimum so that's part of the backup so i definitely want to protect my machines then you have the microsoft nt malware which is a free offering from microsoft azure for protecting your uh, windows operating system uh, and you can see over here, the Windows 10 machine is not supported in this, but uh, it will track for any viruses, remove that, any spyware, and it will also generate an alert in case something or unforeseen activities which is happening. Uh, that is also part of uh, your anti-malware. You can also exclude certain files and location if you don't want to uh, scan this through. So you can also scan type quick and full. And you can also specify which day you want to have that scanning happen, maybe on the Saturdays and Sundays when it is not busy or not typical office uh, 
hours and you can specify the scan time right you want uh, how long you want that scan to run then you have the machine insight monitoring which will track the performance of your machine and the health of your machine and it is relying on logolytic workspace so one question which is uh, sometimes get asked is there a price for Azure Auto Manage. So for the service itself, there is no cost associated, but if it's using any underlining services, for example, backup service or login edit workspace, Azure Automation account, whatever cost for that service, uh, you'll be billed for that one. So this is also enabled. If you want, you can also disable too, but uh, I'll keep that. Then you have the Auto Manage machine configuration, the enable security baseline, which you can typically associate with the group policies that you uh, apply to your, your, your on-prem machine. So that is also part of that, that is enabled. So I'll keep that too. Then your machine needs to be updated on a regular basis. So it's also enrolling you under the update management you can see. So that is also enabled and that is also uh, relying on log analytic workspace as an Azure automation account. So that is also part of that. Then you also have the change tracking as well as the inventory so with this which is also relying on the workspace and the logs will be registered it's going to track the demons the services any changes which is happening to the registry and keep a track of that one so that is also enabled for change tracking and inventory and then you have the microsoft defender for cloud which used to be called maybe security center before that is also enabled and as part of this configuration file the free tier uh, will be enabled as you know that Microsoft Defender for Cloud comes under free category as well as uh, the, the paid version which is like server plan 1 and server plan 2 but through this configuration profile we're talking about it's only the free tier will be enabled and let's say for example your subscription is autumn is when you created that subscription and you unroll that Defender for Cloud under the free tier and even if it is you have selected it, it's just going to uh, keep that free tier option only. So you're not going to get charged for anything because obviously it's a free tier. And then as part of this service, you can see automation account is created, login edit workspace. Uh, then you also have the boot diagnostic, which is like a debugging feature within for your Azure virtual machine. So anything related to a booting up of your operating system of your machine will be logged as part of this service but you can also see that this feature is not supported for azure uh, arc machines and maybe that will come in the future and optionally you can also enable windows admin center you can see by checking this box and uh, you can also manage your windows based uh, machines you can see it is not supported for linux obviously and uh, arc enabled machine but your machines which are there within uh, within azure and these are windows based uh, you can enable Windows Admin, uh, Admin Center for that. And I can just go and click on create. So the idea being that just rather than just utilizing maybe the built-in sort of template for this auto manage, which is production and for dev test, you can create your own. And if I refresh now, you can see that my profile was created. And if I go inside this, uh, these are the selections that I have made and also I have this in JSON format, the selections that I have made over here, right? So that is good. Now, actually, let me also show you one more thing. So I stored this profile under the resource group with the name auto manage. So if I go under my resource group category, auto manage, and I'm just bringing this because I noticed you can see I have created the profile, but I don't see this profile under my resource group because this is under hidden so what you need to do is you can go and go and select this show hidden type and now you can see my profile is selected and the reason i'm showing you this say for example you need to delete this profile in the previous view there was no option of deleting that profile but now uh, under this i can go and uh, if you want i can go and delete this from here too right something to point out which you might come across now if i close this and now go to my auto manage option now i will be able to enroll my machine and you can see enabling is very straightforward i can go and click on enable machine and from here i can choose any of the option or in our case we created a custom profile so i can go and pick that and from here i can see 
the profile which we just recently created. So I can go and select that. If you want, I can also create new from here. And from here, I can specify which machines I want to select, right? Let's say, for example, I want to pick, let's say this accounting uh, server, ACC, right? It's part of the subscription under the resource group, you can see, and I can onboard this. Now, say, for example, you want to onboard your machines in bulk. It is also part of the Azure policy. You can add those or part of the Azure resource manager template, ARM template. You can add those uh, uh, lines into into that uh, template or in the Azure policy and you can also onboard your machines through that too and then I can just go review and create you can see validation is in progress and I click on the create button you can see that uh, I have pushed that service and the status is new and it shows the machine and if I want to again obviously at any other machine, I can go and have this portal experience. But as I mentioned, you can also use this through an ARM template, or you can also push that through an Azure policy to onboard that, but those machines you want, right? And once those machines are onboarded, so it's in progress right now, I can also show you under the virtual machine tab. So if I go and expand this, You can see under operation, I have this auto manage button. And once that machine has been enrolled, you will see the status uh, will change over here. But this is the way you're going to enroll this machine. But the idea being here is that you want to have a standardized procedure, uh, which uh, allows you to onboard your machines and as for the policy and part of the cloud adoption framework, and not only for your machines which are hosted in Azure, but also your machine which has been onboarded through Azure Arc, which can be on-prem. I know that certain machines or certain features are not enabled, but this is an ongoing process. But you want to have one pane of glass through which you should be able to, or have a policy-driven approach to manage all these daily administrative work and reducing your overhead, basically not going inside and keeping a track of each and every machine. This is a far more smoother and easier option to keep a track of your environments spread across uh, different sites. So hopefully this session was useful. Thanks for watching.